Welcome to the Using Sources Workshop, presented by the Writing Center at Trident Technical College. In this presentation, we will review how to include in-text citations in MLA format and how to include direct quotes and paraphrased information. We hope that you find this information helpful as you write your academic essays. Before we address citations, let's take a few minutes to review some basic information about writing academic essays. The act of writing is a process. It has several components or stages that you will cycle through. In the invention stage, you create or gather ideas through research, and you will think critically or analyze that information. Once you have collected your information, you will move on to arrangement, the stage when you begin to organize your thoughts and develop a thesis statement, the point you want to make in your paper. You may find that an outline helps you to organize your information before you begin your draft. Finally, as you draft your paper, you will address elocution, the expression of your ideas using appropriate vocabulary, proper grammar, and correct punctuation in clear sentences. The first step for any assignment is to gather ideas and create content. Where you go to find those ideas depends upon the purpose of your assignment and the audience who will read it. To draft a personal reflection essay, you will have to pull ideas and memories from your own mind. To draft an argumentative or persuasive essay, you will need to gather information from academic sources and sometimes popular media. To draft a literary analysis essay, you will not only need to read the specific text or piece of literature, but you may also gather information from academic sources. So let's dive into those different types of sources. You will often hear your instructors speak about academic sources. What exactly are they? How are they different from popular sources or popular media? Well, academic sources are texts written by and for people who have considerable training or knowledge in a particular field. These sources may include academic journals, professional magazines, college or university reports, government documents, books, and essays. For example, the Journal of the American Medical Association is written by and for doctors and other medical professionals. In contrast, popular sources are those that are created for general audiences. Their content may reference or summarize academic materials, but it is written in such a way that the average person can understand it. Popular sources include newspaper and magazine articles, documentary videos or films, business or organization websites, and books. Some popular sources that you might have seen are the Washington Post, Silence Daily, and the Discovery Channel. Sources can also be classified as primary or secondary. Primary sources are original works that are written or produced by the author. They express the thoughts, words, and actions of an individual or group of people. Primary sources may be historical documents, literary works, speeches, diaries, memoirs, government documents, and academic or observational studies. Some primary sources you might have read are the Declaration of Independence and Anne Frank's Diary of a Young Girl. Secondary sources are works written by an author who collects and interprets the data of others. They include scholarly books and articles, biographies, and literary critiques, as well as reference books and textbooks. You will often use secondary sources when you are gathering general information about a topic. So how do you determine the type of the source you have found? First, look at the title of the work. Titles in academic sources are often long and detailed, while titles in popular sources are often short and catchy, 
designed to get your attention. Where you found that source may also give you a clue. If you used one of the college databases, you might have been able to sort the search results into categories, such as academic journals. Look at the publisher. Is it a professional organization, a college or government agency? Those will often be academic sources. Finally, if you have found your source online, look at the URL. If the ending of the domain name is .edu, .org, or .gov, you might have found an academic source. As you are reading each source, look critically at the information it provides. Think about what arguments the author is making and if you find them persuasive. Look to see if the author has provided logical evidence to support their argument. Consider the author's credibility or trustworthiness, their possible bias and worldview. Finally, consider if the author's point or argument supports or challenges your own position on the topic. Once you have collected and read all of your sources, it is time to begin to synthesize the information to arrive at your own thesis. To do this, you might identify the sources which make the strongest argument related to your topic. Then look for similarities or areas of agreement between all of your sources. Then you might identify the point or question that divides the sources. The question of fact, definition, quality or significance, or policy that creates controversy. This is where you can take a stand and create a thesis statement that explains the point of view you want to argue in your paper. For example, Let's say that you are writing a persuasive paper on the topic of climate change. As you read your sources, you notice that they discuss a variety of definitions of climate change, data that indicates rising temperatures around the world and related weather patterns, changes in animal behaviors, implications for coastal communities, government policies, and ways individuals can reduce their carbon footprint. You decide that the point you can most effectively argue is that last idea, that individuals can and should change their behaviors to impact the environment. So your thesis becomes, in order to decrease society's impact on the environment, individuals should reduce their carbon footprint by shopping locally, reducing waste, and using electric, po electric power transportation. So now that you know your thesis and have started organizing your information to draft your paper, the question arises, when do you cite your sources? Well, the best advice is when in doubt, always cite. But let's get more specific here. If you are writing your own ideas or sharing your own research, photos, images, or drawings, you don't have to cite them. If you are citing common or widely known facts, such as historical dates, geographic features, or basic terms in your field of study, the kind of concepts you might find in a dictionary or encyclopedia, then you do not need to cite the source. For everything else, you will need to acknowledge where you found the information so you can avoid being accused of plagiarism. This is when you include the words of other writers or speakers in your paper without giving the source credit. This makes it seem like you are claiming the words of others as your own. As you can see here, it's important to cite direct quotes, paraphrases, and summaries of information. We'll explain these in detail in just a minute. You'll also want to cite statistics, controversial statements, images, graphs, and charts. To cite your information, you will acknowledge the source in two places, within the text and at the end. 
in-text or parenthetical citations are placed directly into the sentences. You can see in the first example listed here that the ideas are coming from the author Smith and specifically from page 53. So with that in mind, as you are collecting your research and taking notes, be sure that you record exactly where you find information. Page numbers are necessary in MLA format. If you cite information within your paper, you will also record its source on the Works Cited page at the end of your essay. In the second example listed here, an entry on a Works Cited page, you can see that the student used information from a book written by Curtis Anderson. When you introduce information from a source for the first time, it is important to provide context by using a signal phrase. This means that you will include the author's name, their profession and credentials, if necessary, and an appropriate signal verb. Notice that the word says is not on this list. Instead, you see verbs that provide deeper meaning. In academic papers, it's important that you let the reader know if an author agrees with an idea, responds to a question, or asserts a point. Let's look at some examples on this slide. Dr. Irina Ehrman, director of the Russian Studies Department at the College of Charleston, argues that in his book, Midnight in Siberia, NPR correspondent David Green reports, as novelist Amy Tan concludes, all of these signal phrases are appropriate for college level writing. Please note that in MLA format, all signal verbs are written in the present tense. So now let's look at when and how you should use quotes in your academic papers. If you are quoting a source, this means that you are incorporating the exact words of an author into your text. Only do this when you need to include the exact words of an expert. If an authority on your topic offers a challenging opinion, if you want it to stand out from the rest of your text, or if you are referring to specific lines from literature, let's say a poem or play or novel. Short quotes will be incorporated directly into a sentence, while longer quotes should be formatted in a way that they are set off on their own. Here are some examples from literature. In the first example, the student has chosen to include the exact words of the author Wordsworth. These are contained within quotation marks. In the second example, the student has included several lines from the poem Dover Beach. Notice how in this longer quote, the words are not contained in quotation marks. Rather, the use of block indentation lets the reader know that all of these lines are from the same source. Sometimes the quote you want to mention is too long or needs some explanation. If you need to take a few words out, be sure to replace them with the ellipses, the symbol created by placing three periods side by side without any spaces in between. We can see an example of this here. If you need to add a word or two to clarify or define a word in a quote, use brackets around the information that you are adding. In the second example, the writer decides to clarify that the word they is referring to the House Democrats. So what is paraphrasing? This is when you restate or retell information in your own words or sentence structure. You paraphrase information when the ideas are important, but the exact wording of the original source is not necessary. Now, beware. If you just change a few words in a quote, let's say by using a thesaurus, but you keep the same sentence structure, this is not paraphrasing. It's called patch writing, and it's a form of plagiarism. 
One of the best examples of this is when a student changed the famous quote from George Orwell's 1984, Big Brother is Watching You, into Enormous Sibling is Viewing You. Sure, the meaning is somewhat similar, but the point is that you haven't paraphrased the quote. And truly, why would you want to? The line is fine just the way it is. Let's look at some examples to see where it makes sense to paraphrase or to quote. In the sentence on the left, the writer shares some information about the amount of gasoline that residents of New York City use. It says they use less than any other American city. Since we are not including a statistic about the specific amount of gasoline used, a paraphrase makes sense. Notice that the writer does, not, does include an in-text citation that indicates the information came from the source written by Owen. In the example sentence on the right, the author includes a direct quote. Edward Glazner argues that if you love nature, stay away from it, and so on. Here, the language is memorable, and it shares some insight into the character of the author. It makes sense to write this as a quote rather than trying to paraphrase the ideas. Most of the time, as you write your academic papers, you will be paraphrasing and summarizing the information you have collected. When you summarize information, you state the main ideas concisely and in your own words. This is often done when you want to share a brief synopsis of a longer work. Be sure that you don't include details from the source if you're summarizing. As with paraphrasing, if you include any language from the original source, be sure to put just those words in quotation marks. Here we can see an example of some information that has been summarized from the Steingraber source. Notice that even though the information is summarized, the writer still gave credit to the author and indicated the page number in the source where the information can be found. Whether you deliberately fail to cite your sources or you do it accidentally, it's still plagiarism. So to avoid receiving negative feedback from your instructor, failing a class, or even worse, follow these simple tips. Take careful notes as you research. That means you should write down the article or book title, the author or authors, the container for the article or where you found it online, the publisher, date, volume and issue numbers, editors, and any other important information found on the title page. See our workshop called Formatting Academic Sources for more information. As you take notes, be sure that you label quotations as just that, a quotation. If you paraphrase or summarize the information, note that too. Give credit to all sources you use in a paper in two places, in the text and on the Works Cited page. If you use online sources, be sure to cite that as well. Don't just copy and paste the information directly into your paper, thinking that you will remember to cite it later. Too often, as students are in a rush to submit their final paper, they forget to cite information from online sources. Finally, be sure to check that your paraphrases and summaries are in your own words. If you use quotes, be sure that you have formatted them appropriately. If you have any further questions about how and when to cite information in your paper, feel free to stop by the Writing Center. Finally, please remember that the Writing Center at Trident Technical College is available for all students free of charge. You may stop by for in-person tutoring during our office hours, or you may reach us online through our talk chat feature or email. Consult our webpage for our hours of operation and links to helpful handouts. Please know that our mission is to help you become a confident, skilled writer. Thank you for taking the time to watch this workshop.